Welcome to my after the fact review for the unique Typhoon H520. Now the H520 is actually bigger than Unique's Typhoon. If you are familiar with the Typhoon H, it's a hexacopter, it looks just like this, but the remote is completely different. In fact, even the arms are a little bit longer on the H520, the motors are bigger and the propellers are bigger. That way it can carry this bigger, larger E90 camera. Now the E90 camera is the same exact sensor that you would find in a Phantom 4 Pro, so you would think, wow, this drone is probably really good for mapping, right? It's got six arms, six motors, it can probably fly longer. It can even probably fly in more difficult conditions. You'd be right, but making the assumption that this is good for mapping because it has the same exact sensor as a Phantom 4 Pro, well, we're gonna find out that they really are two very different things. Now our whole goal of the review was to take the Typhoon H520 and really compare it to the Phantom 4 Pro because I actually think competition is a really good thing in the drone space. The more competitors that we have to DJI, the more and more they're gonna innovate and give us a better product. Same thing for Unique. With DJI, we should be getting better and better Unique products. The only thing is, it's not really what it's made out to be. Right, so a couple pros really quick. It's got a high voltage battery, so the battery is actually different from the regular Typhoon H. The 520 has a high voltage battery, and I'm getting about 23 minutes of flight time at 6,000 feet in elevation. At 6,000 feet in elevation, that's really good. So if I were to take this down to the beach where I'm at like 50 feet, 100 feet in elevation, you're probably gonna get a solid 27 to even 30 minutes of flight time out of it. So you can fly, very long times with this drone, but also more days out of the year. Because it is a hexacopter, if I lose one prop, I'm still gonna be able to bring the drone down. But where a lot of people stop with that statement is right there. What you need to know is that if you were to lose one prop, this thing would yaw completely out of control and you have to learn to stop the yaw and bring the drone down properly. So, can this help avoid crashes? Yes, absolutely it can. The other benefits to this drone is the fact that it does not have any NFZs on it. The Typhoon H, the regular hexacopter, does have no fly zones. This bird does not. So if you're a commercial operator like myself and you need to do some mapping projects in areas where you're locked out from DJI or you can't get service or something, you will not have those problems with this drone. Now other things I like about it, it does finally have PIX4D integration. So we were finally able to do a comparison from one drone, the Unique Typhoon H, to the Phantom 4 Pro. Because I really did wanna see, wh what are our results gonna look like? What if we map the exact same section of space, the exact same number of photos in a grid mission? We map it with a Phantom 4 Pro, the same altitude, and we map with a Unique H520, same altitude, same number of images. I gotta be honest with you, whenever you're operating mapping, it's typically an autonomous operation. But even with the PIX4D capability, we still don't have an oval and orbit mode that's an intelligent flight mode. So we still have to do all of our orbit facade shots in some sort of angle flight mode and take the images manually ourselves. Now with the Phantom 4 Pro, it's a lot easier, it's a lot more convenient to work with. We've got all of our intelligent flight modes not only built into the DJI GO 4 app, but we also have it in the PIX4D application as well, making most of the mapping missions significantly easier to actually perform. You know, if this camera ends up being significantly better, it'll be worth the extra time and effort that you have to put out in the field. Otherwise, right now, the Phantom is still much more convenient to use when doing your aerial operations. A little bit later on, I'm gonna show you the results of that because they were actually striking to see how big of a difference they were. And I'm gonna let you make your own conclusions. I'm just gonna show you the facts and we're gonna go over to my mapping machine and show you exactly what to expect.
So I wanted to show you scientifically the differences between the unique H520 and the Phantom 4 Pro. So I literally processed the exact same areas with each map. Um, so that way I would have the same number of images, they would be captured the same way. And I mean, it literally took six months for the H520 to have PIX4D integration. And now that it even has PIX4D integration, it still doesn't have orbit mode. So I tried taking the same number of pictures, but I ended up with 125 on the unique and 122 on the Phantom. Remember that, the Phantom has less images. When I initially processed both of these maps together, I realized that there's a significant difference between these two cameras that I didn't really understand before. And it comes down to focal length or how far essentially the lens is from the sensor itself. That can actually play a huge difference in your ground sampling distance. It can also play a huge difference in the type and quality of reports that you do get from PIX4D. Just to preface this, I did rerun the unique data with new information when I had it, and I'll go over that here in a minute. Originally, I ran both maps at the exact same systems, the exact same templates, and the exact same settings in PIX4D to do a true comparison. I even have the same exact processing area. Now, that being said, when I look at the number of 3D densified points on my Phantom map, I've got 10.5 million versus 9.1 million in my unique map. Well, not only that, but also if we take a look at the average number of points per square meter, in the Phantom, we have 24,669 versus 6,545 in the unique. So I was wondering, what is going on? Why are these maps so different? Why is the data so different? Come to find out the E90 camera has a rolling shutter versus the Phantom 4 Pro camera, which has a global shutter. Well, what does that mean? A global shutter, essentially, if I have the whole sensor, it's gonna take an image at the exact same time. This pixel and this pixel captured at the exact same time. With a linear or a rolling shutter, or a linear rolling shutter, essentially our image is captured in a sequence from let's say left to right or right to left. So this pixel is captured at a different time than this pixel over here, which means that your data can be a little bit skewed, especially when you're flying. Now, the unique H520 E90 camera has, believe it or not, a rolling shutter. But if that makes you mad, then you're really gonna hate this. The X5 and the X7 from DJI, which should be better quote unquote mapping cameras, are not because they both have rolling shutters as well. So the Phantom 4 Pro has a global shutter. So when I figured that out, what I did is I ran a new map and I changed the settings on the unique stuff to say, this is a linear rolling shutter, it's not a global shutter. Well, sure enough, it did change my um, statistics, okay? So with the rolling shutter versus global shutter, it causes a significant problem. It actually comes down to your ground sampling distance. Now, I flew both of these missions at 90 feet above ground level. My ground sampling distance on the Phantom 4 Pro was 0.47 centimeters versus 0.77 centimeters on the unique. When I reran the data, the ground sampling distance changed to 0.73 centimeters for the unique. Now, why is that a big deal? If I fly the unique at 400 feet to try to map a golf course, because I'm gonna have to fly almost that high to collect the whole golf course in one day, I'm gonna have about half of the accuracy or ground sampling distance that I would with a Phantom 4 Pro. So that's a big, that's a big <clears throat> Like that's bad, that's really, really bad. So when I actually processed the map with linear rolling shutter this time, I did get a better ground sampling distance and I actually ended up with more points than the Phantom 4 Pro map. I have 11.5 million points versus 10.5 million points on the Phantom. But here's the interesting part. On the Phantom, I still have a point density, so points per square meter of 24,669 versus 7,029 points per square meter on the Unique. So the Unique has a worse ground sampling distance. It has, now that I've corrected the type of uh, processing I'm doing, it now has more points, but less point density. So all in all, I have to say that I'm really disappointed to report after doing a lot of testing and, and analysis that the unique H520 is nowhere near the, the drone mapping machine that I once thought it was. And I apologize if you went out and you bought a, a Typhoon H. Here's the thing. 
If you live in a really windy environment and you need something to fly all year long, the Typhoon H is awesome. The lower number of point density is actually a pro if you're in the construction industry. So it could be really, really good for that. Now, the one thing I've noticed when flying both these drones in front of clients is that clients love the hexacopter. It looks professional, looks like you're a mapper and all. But you gotta understand, just because something is good from afar doesn't mean that it's also good. As, as my brother and I would say, it's good from afar, but far from good. And that is definitely what the unique Typhoon H is, which again, is really disappointing because competition is good. But all in all, those are the findings. I've posted both maps on Sketchfab, so you can take a look at them. In fact, taking a look at them right now, you'll see that there's a little bit of color difference too between the two maps. You'll see a little bit better detail inside of the stone house structure with the unique, but you'll see better uh, point density and color density in the Phantom map. Overall, if I had to choose which drone I'm gonna be buying for mapping, well, what do you think it is?